120,000 New York City students are homeless. Why is no one talking about this? Disturbing new report is out, shedding light on homelessness among children in New York City public schools. They're having a trouble with focusing on their schoolwork. Teachers don't really know what's going on. Data shows the key to addressing society's cycle of homelessness is in the classroom. Students who graduate from high school are much less likely to experience homelessness as adults. It's pretty hard for kids that's in school. I cannot imagine being homeless, let alone being a student who's homeless. But unfortunately, that's a reality for 120,000 kids here in New York. And 30,000 students in temporary housing have enrolled in NYC schools since this past summer. Now, being homeless does not necessarily mean a student doesn't have a place to sleep. Many students are in the shelter system, temporary housing, like hotels, not necessarily out on the street. Either way, it's a bad situation, and it puts the futures of one out of every nine New York City students in jeopardy. And if you don't graduate, your ability to provide for yourself is going to be in serious jeopardy, especially here in New York. And it's already very, very hard to get an apartment in New York City right now. The average rent this past year hit $5,600 a month. And to make matters worse, that $5,600 rent figure, that doesn't get you like a four bedroom or a five bedroom apartment that you could conceivably live with someone else in and start a big family. No, that's the average price for any apartment. That includes studios and one bedrooms. One in nine students were identified as homeless last school year. Sharing in the Bronx, that ratio was one in six children. The number of students without homes this year is 14% higher than the year before. Also, many of the new homeless students are newly arrived asylum seekers, many of whom have limited English language proficiency. And they're considered homeless because they're part of the shelter system. Now, this influx of new students, it's a double-edged sword for New York City public schools. The reason it's good is because schools can face budget cuts if they have less students this year than they had last year. But the reason that it's bad is because according to the New York Times, school leaders have anonymously mentioned that the schools aren't doing enough to help these new students. That is hard for kids to focus, like, because that's what I'm going through with my kids. Kareem, a proud father of five, his family homeless. It's been really hard. We met him Wednesday in the Bronx, across the street from the city's main intake center for homeless families. Man, you gotta feel bad for that parent. He knows his kids are in a tough situation, and he's worried about what their future's gonna be like if they can't concentrate and succeed in the one thing that they have to do every single day. When I was in school, it was tough enough to pay attention, and I can't even imagine having to be in an unstable situation every single morning and every single evening and trying to focus and and do anything. For so many homeless students, this is the first stop in an academic journey filled with uncertainty and instability. They're having a trouble with focusing on their schoolwork. A lot of times, you know, teachers don't really know what's going on. You know, if your living situation ends up being a mess, the things that you end up doing every single morning and every single evening, those are gonna affect your education directly and then that's gonna end up being a mess too and this whole cycle is just gonna perpetuate itself. And it's gonna take extra resources to help these kids but city agencies have to make cuts because of the asylum crisis. Data shows the key to addressing society's cycle of homelessness is in the classroom. Students who don't graduate with a high school diploma are four and a half times more likely to experience homelessness as an adult. Now, in a city like New York with a homeless crisis, the last thing that needs to happen is for that cycle to continue growing and perpetuating itself. Now, the city's resources for helping struggling kids are stretched super, super thin. And unfortunately, they can only provide about one bilingual social worker for every 560 kids. The city has a total of about 1,700 bilingual educators who are fluent in English and Spanish. And the reason this is important is because many of the new asylum seekers, they speak Spanish as a primary language. But apparently, that's not enough bilingual staff and teachers in the school have reportedly resorted to using Google Translate to get lesson plans in languages all of the students in the class can understand. Now, I've been to Japan six times, and I've tried to use Google Translate to talk to people who don't speak English. And even in a modern, sophisticated society where everybody has a smartphone, it's still not something that everybody's used to. And the translations aren't always 100% correct, even though they're better at Japanese than I ever will be. Now, in a perfect world, there would be enough money to have enough bilingual educators to help every kid that needs it. But this is New York in 2023, and that's just not not reality right now, unfortunately. On top of that, the city doesn't really have a good plan to get out of this mess. Which fueled the city's Department of Education to hire 100 community coordinators to work in shelters last year. Yet, there is no plan after this school year to continue the funding for these positions. So it looks like the city is using whatever resources it can find to make temporary assistance available 
when it can. But if the city has no plan to continue paying these community coordinators to help people who are in the shelter system, I don't see how this is going to work out long term. Critics say that if the city's going to offer housing to anybody who wants it, they should be prepared to do everything they can for the children of those people who need to be in school. And since last year, over 130,000 people have come to the city seeking asylum. And as you can imagine, some of those are going to be families with kids. And New York City's right to shelter rules mandate that the city feed and clothe everyone who comes here on a temporary basis, as well as educate their children, along with providing housing. And that's why the shelter system is full. In fact, city shelters are so full that the city is now evicting families with children after 60 days. And what this essentially means is that a student from a family seeking asylum in New York could be enrolled in a school for two months, and then the family leaves, gets put in another location, maybe not even near where that school is. And now the student has to figure out a whole new routine to get ready every single day and make it to that school and still learn at the same level that they need to to graduate. This is not only bad for the kids, it's also bad for the schools because they don't want to see the kids fail and they don't want things to be harder for the students than they already need to be, especially with all the declining resource talk we keep hearing about. Many families in shelter are placed in a different borough from where their kids go to school, so accessing transportation is a huge issue for those families. Okay, this is in reference to the fact that the shelter system is full and the city's not always able to place people in shelters near where the kids will attend school. Conceivably, a family could be placed at a shelter out in Brooklyn, but their school could be here in Manhattan. And since you're moving after two months, the new shelter, where's that going to be? Brooklyn? Queens? Maybe Manhattan? It could be in the Bronx? A family could end up moving three times during a school year, which in and of itself is just an absolute nightmare. Every time you move, your routine changes, your schedule changes, your commute changes. You've got to get used to everything all over again. When that parent mentioned how his kids were distracted, I think this has a little bit to do with what he was talking about. But things are actually even worse than that because the city's got a new plan now that the shelter system is full. And that plan involves putting people in congregate shelters. And this is where things get really scary and homeless advocates say the city is making a big mistake. So if you're wondering what a congregate shelter looks like, let me show you. Look at this. It's cots in a massive tent, just rows and rows of beds. Now the city's in the process of opening a new congregate shelter at Floyd Bennett Field, but that's in Southern Brooklyn. And to get from there over to Manhattan, where we are right now, that's over an hour. And since you got to commute two ways, you're looking at probably two and a half hours travel time every single day. And not only are you adjusting to a new living situation, look at this. It's like a little room with beds on the floor, kind of like maybe a disaster relief center. I guess that's another good way to put it. The bathrooms are shared. You're going to be using the bathroom with strangers every day. You've effectively got zero privacy in a house. You've got privacy because you're there with just your family, but here you're sharing with other families. Check out the dining hall. Plastic tables, plastic chairs, just a big tent. It's probably very loud, very noisy. I can't imagine having little kids and living in a place like this. I actually do have little kids. I have a four-year-old and an 11-month-old, and it takes us about an hour to get them out of the house, and that's in a private environment that we fully control because it's our house. Now, the mayor's critics, they've come out really hard against him for this plan. They say that it's inhumane to put people in congregate shelters. And although they're right, the mayor says that the city has no more room. There are no more actual shelters that can be used. Congregate settings are going to be the only option that people have left. And it's really sad. But what other choice is there. And even after a student gets out of their shelter and gets to school, the challenges they face are only just beginning. Although stimulus funding is expiring, ensuring continued support for these student populations remains essential. That is why this year we added a new weight to the fair student funding formula that prioritizes students in temporary housing. You know, it's great that the city is rearranging its education system to try and prioritize the education of these underserved kids. But the problem is with so few resources, the resources are being taken away away from other kids that were succeeding. And that's something that not every parent is thrilled with. And this reallocation means that unfortunately there will be winners and losers based on how the city decides to do things. And what's really crazy is that the city's issues with homeless students, those have been going on a lot longer than this past year and the year before. This has been a problem eight years in the making. So your agency has been tracking the numbers for years. 
Were you expecting the numbers, I guess, to be this high? I mean, the numbers are very disturbing, uh, and we were certainly expecting to see somewhat of an increase given what we have been hearing about the number of kids in shelter. Now, back in 2017, the population of homeless students was at 117,000. Remember, today it's at around 120,000. And this essentially means that the current conditions in New York City right now are exacerbating this crisis and making it even worse. Now, this isn't necessarily the fault of the education system. I mean, they don't control housing prices. They don't control how many new apartment buildings the city lets people build. They don't control any of that stuff, and they don't control what people get paid after they graduate. So it's not like it's just education that's the problem here. There's a whole bunch of problems. And what's also going to sound pretty ridiculous is that up until 2020, there was no internet access in any of the shelter systems. People there were offline up until 2020. For the first time in the history of the city school system, more than 11,000 school-aged children who live in shelters across New York City will have access to the internet. That's absolutely insane. There's no way that was ever going to work. I can't believe it took that long. And the students actually had to sue the city to get the Wi-Fi put into the shelters. Now, that doesn't mean the people running the shelters hate the families that are in there. Far from that. But it does mean that when resources are tight, getting them is going to be a fight, even if the people who have them want to give them to you because there's just not enough to go around. So I don't know how to do long division, but I just Googled long division and look at all these tutorials. You've got the short videos with pencil and paper, and it's kind of like having the internet is an essential tool for learning anything nowadays. In 2015, I started a business where I sold stuff on Amazon and I learned how to start that business from YouTube all for free. And when my four-year-old hits the second grade, I'm going to have to use YouTube to help her learn stuff. Critics of the city's education system are saying these are the types of things that lead to this situation of homelessness just continuing to propagate itself. And they're saying that's why the number of homeless students hasn't really decreased. But the city's supporters say that, you know what, resources are limited and we're doing the best we can with the little that we've got. But how do you think New York City should respond to this crisis? Is the city doing enough? Is it doing too much? Let me know. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.